Can Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton snatch pole position? Will Ferrari deliver on their promise from practice? And do Red Bull have anything in their locker to challenge Mercedes or Ferrari? Find out in this video. <music> to start off with, qualifying was nice and dry. But when it started to rain, chaos ensued, allowing Lewis Hamilton to take pole position. Hamilton's on pole from Sebastian Vettel 2nd, Esteban Ocon in 3rd, Sergio Perez 4th and Romain Grosjean in 5th. Then it's Kimi 6th, Max Verstappen in 7th, Daniel Ricciardo 8th, Kevin Magnussen 9th and Valtteri Bottas in 10th. Then P11 to P15 is Gasly, Hartley, Leclerc, Ericsson and Nico Hülkenberg. With Carlos Sainz, Fernando Alonso, Sergei Sorokin, Lance Stroll and Stoffel van Dorn rounding out the field. But first with this qualifying review let's look at how the top teams did. Once again when the rain came, Lewis Hamilton produced when it mattered, in a very similar way to what he did back in Hungary. Getting the pole position because he was on the track at the absolute right time. And with his main ride was not on the track at the right time, that allowed Lewis Hamilton to take pole position. Now for Valtteri Bottas, even though he has a penalty that means he has to start at the back, it was not a great session. As not only was he not that fast in both Q1 and Q2, he had a massive off at Blanchimont in Q3. A spin that could have been way worse had the speed been a lot higher. But despite that, with Lewis Hamilton getting pole position, it is a great day for Mercedes. But they have a big job to do to hold off Ferrari and Sebastian Vettel in the race. Up until Q3, it was looking so good for Ferrari. As it was still dry and it looked as though Ferrari were definitely going to get pole position. But just like in Hungary, the rain intervened. First off, hurting Sebastian Vettel's chances as he ended up in P2. And he just could not get enough out of the car to beat Hamilton. But it was very sad for Kimi Raikkonen, who at one point in qualifying was on provisional pole position. But then could not do any more laps at the end of the session where the track was very good because he ran out of fuel. What a horrible way for his session to end. Especially after he was so fast in both Q1 and Q2. Ferrari again in qualifying disappointed massively. And they have to repair that on Sunday. When the rain came it looked as though Red Bull might be able to sneak a pole position. But both Red Bulls went on to suffer the same issue as Kimi Raikkonen. Where after showing some good pace in the first part of Q3 they ran out of fuel meaning they missed out on the best time to be out on track and missed out on pole position. And will now line up in 7th and 8th, an absolutely dismal qualifying session. And after qualifying in Hungary, another missed opportunity. Red Bull are really not having a good time of it at the moment, and I do not see it getting any better in tomorrow's race. Now though, let's look at how the midfield teams did in qualifying at Spa. Not for the first and not for the last time, McLaren were absolutely awful. In 17th and last place. Even Fernando Alonso, with all of the talent he has, could not produce a good performance. Because the car is just that bad. And Stoffel van Dorn's day was not too great either. After having an incident with Valtteri Bottas in practice 3 and then finishing last at his home Grand Prix in qualifying. I do not see how van Dorn can survive much longer at McLaren. And I don't see how McLaren can survive with performances like this. This is for sure a full-blown crisis. It was also an awful day for Renault. On a day where they had to have a good result. But they ended up with Hülkenberg and Sainz in 15th and 16th place. Now Hülkenberg was going to start at the back anyway so that's why he ended up in 15th. But Sainz for me in 16th was just not good enough. Because Hülkenberg is starting at the back, Carlos had to be up there competing with Haas. And after this performance, they are now nowhere near the Haas cars. That could be vital at the end of 2018. Especially if in the race Haas go on to have a very good result. A lot of work for Renault to do in the Grand Prix. After all the financial troubles they've had over the last few weeks, what a day this is for Force India. Locking out the second row of the grid. And even though yes they did capitalise on being on the track at the absolute right time. Because of the trouble they've been through they thoroughly deserve this result. 
And guys, I would not be surprised if Force India actually ended up getting a podium. Because remember, they are very good at this track and they are very quick down the Kemmel Strait. The main place for cars to overtake them. So I would not be surprised if Force India got a podium. And they would certainly deserve it. At a track where Williams really should have been good, they were poor once again. No surprise there. I wish them luck dwelling in the basement tomorrow. This actually turned out to be a very positive session for Toro Rosso. Coming into qualifying, the best I saw for this team was 14th or 15th, but have ended up impressively locking out the 6th row of the grid. And with retirements ahead, you never know Toro Rosso could score some unexpected points. It's also nice to see that Brendan Hartley is definitely improving. No one can really doubt that at all. And hopefully in tomorrow's race he keeps that up. Like the Force India team, it was also a great day for Haas. With Roman Grosjean also capitalising on the great conditions at the end of Q3. And will line up for the Belgian Grand Prix in 5th place. That is a very important and impressive performance. But it wasn't too great from Kevin Magnussen, who could have also been up there had he not made a mistake on his final run in Q3. But at least for the team and their fight with Renault for 4th in the Constructors' Championship, both cars are inside the top 10 for the starting grid. Race day in Spa could be a big day for Haas. Hopefully they can take full advantage of Renault's woes. And finally is, Sa and finally is Sauber who weren't that impressive. Only 13th and 14th with Leclerc and Ericsson. I was expecting way more from these two drivers and this team. Through practice it looked like they were definitely going to be in the top 10. But with Leclerc at least they did not produce what it mattered when it came to the end of Q2. Marcus Ericsson though was unlucky with some kind of engine issue during qualifying. But I would not be surprised still if Sauber did score some points. Their car is definitely capable of doing that. But that is it guys after an absolutely manic qualifying session. Definitely one of the best of 2018. Hopefully race day tomorrow is even better. But anyway guys that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys I will be back tomorrow with a race watch along and a race reaction live on my channel. Don't forget as well to join the Chazer HDF1 Discord server. A link to that is in the description also with my Twitter. Comment down below what you thought of this video and comment down below what did you think of what happened in qualifying at Spa. Please comment down below what you think about those topics and until next time it's been me Chazer HD. goodbye.